Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I guess I guess I am a Gachra Ortsa in San Arakt Ur at Ha Ostakor Amahansho. I'm honoured, Deputy Speaker, to replace my friend and comrade Mitchell McLaughlin in this assembly and to represent South Antrim. I pay tribute to his role as an architect of the peace process and latterly as Speaker of this House. Since childhood, I have been inspired by a proud Antrim Republican tradition founded on the egalitarian and anti-sectarian ideals of Jimmy Hope and Roger Casement and the commitment of personal friends now deceased such as Anne McCoy, John Davy, Malachi Carey and Peter Gallagher. Jarviamsa, go will machomanta my yehel a yanu or yas nanini gulier or one tras fubble. The purpose of the economy must be to serve the needs of society. Budget allocations should be aligned with society's priorities. And this small regional economy contends with deep structural weaknesses. It depends upon a public expenditure settlement from Westminster, which has reduced in net terms year on year since 2010, due to the austerity policies of this British Tory government and the previous administration of Tories and Lib Dems. British government policy has been a direct cause of political instability here in recent years. The North remains a low-wage economy, with unyielding and unchanging patterns of social and economic disadvantage, and the worst living standards of any region in Ireland or Britain. Tory austerity has run down our public services and forced our people into food banks. It has undermined economic growth, prevented balanced regional investment and job creation, all Ireland economic competitiveness and the eradication of inequality, and add to all of that the denial of fiscal independence to this executive. So, austerity is the cost of the Union. And that is the context of this budget debate, and within which the new programme for government must be implemented. The PFG offers a new policy paradigm which puts the well-being of community at the heart of governmental decision-making. The proposed consultation process should be embraced as a strategic opportunity by local businesses, our trade unionists, our urban and our rural based community sectors and wider civic society to further democratise the process of government here in this state. And I urge the executive to listen carefully, very carefully. Increased engagement and partnership with wider civic society should now define how our regional government works. Ni more than Aimanus Agustin Chunnel, Mallarch Schle Stratishach Awunlu Amahancho. There is a need for a step change. Renewed commitment to power sharing and partnership has to be central to the new mandate. And that will be as much a test for those parties which have chosen to go into opposition as it will be for those parties who are entrusted with governmental responsibility. The approach to the forthcoming PFG should be radical, innovative, and it should be transformational. And it should refuse to be fettered by institutional orthodoxy and absolutely, resolutely oppose austerity. These institutions need to continue to act as a bulwark against British Tory austerity. I believe justice and policing remain central to the continued democratic transformation of this state. And as my party's justice spokesperson, I will advocate for increased investment in frontline policing, community restorative justice programmes, and effective service delivery to make our community a safer place for everyone. Justice agencies and processes must be appropriately resourced to ensure they administer not only appropriate punishment, but also deterrence and rehabilitation. The justice system must become more responsive to young people, vulnerable women, disadvantaged families and our elderly citizens. And everyone must have adequate access to justice. And that includes those families who are denied truth and justice because of the British government's refusal to finance legacy investigations and inquests. There must also be greater accountability regarding the use of public funding. Already in the Public Accounts Committee, I have noted an absence of transparency and accountability and a culture of disregard concerning the use of public funds in this state. 
That is never acceptable. But more especially when our executive budget is being raided by Tories and far too many families are living on the breadline. There must be a zero tolerance towards the misuse and the abuse of public funds. In recent days, the EU referendum has dramatically changed the political and economic landscape here. The majority of voters from across the political spectrum in this state voted to say the North should remain in Europe. This referendum was always about a civil war, a civil war between British Conservative right-wing factions. And it's unacceptable that the democratic will of this region should be overruled by English voters. Our economic and financial future is now one of unprecedented uncertainty. 200,000 jobs in Ireland directly and indirectly depend upon 1.2 billion euros worth of trade north and south on this island every week. Brexit directly threatens all of that and more. I have previously challenged Theresa Villiers to say whether Brexit would benefit our people and if her government would replace the lost investment, trade and funding that would go with a Brexit. She refused to answer then and since. However, the majority of our people know the answers to those questions and they re registered that answer last Thursday. And their outrage is justified. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, Theresa Villiers should follow David Cameron and resign. She has absolutely no authority to represent the economic or the social interests of the people of the North of Ireland or on matters regarding Europe. Brexit is the price of Ireland's continued partition. And I predict that we will now face an even more right-wing Tory government and greater levels of austerity in this state. This Assembly and Executive should respect and underpin the democratic decision of the North and not, as other speakers have advocated, simply roll over and acquiesce. We are better than that. Our urgent focus must be upon retaining our special relationship with the EU and protecting the trade, the investment and the funding which are essential to support our regional and island economies. The Executive's budget, the programme for government and the democratic will of our people must not be held hostage to the anti-democratic agenda of British right-wing Tories. The British state, as we know it, is now in crisis. The political imperative now for this Assembly must be to stand up for local democracy and to face down austerity coming from Britain. Where am I going?